viewers, this is E36 Fanatics, Steven here, and today I want to give you a, a little tutorial on a few, a few different tips on how to part out a car and make some money doing it. So my first tip for parting out a car uh, is picking the car, basically. You want to make sure when you're choosing a car to part out, uh, whether it's a car you already own or maybe you just want to learn more about cars and you want to uh, basically take it apart, you want to pick a car that's going to actually get a nice price for the parts, for used parts, but also is in pretty high demand. This Mercedes, for example, uh, the parts are extremely expensive, but the issue that I've had with parting out this thing is that not as many people drive these cars as compared to some of the BMWs I've parted out. Now, I've parted out BMWs, specifically the E36 series, and I tell you, you get a good price for the used parts, and they're extremely popular cars among enthusiasts. Uh, this makes it a lot better to part out these kind of cars versus something like a Mercedes-Benz, which is going to be driven by a lot less people. So that's the first thing. You want to make sure that there's a good enough market for it, but the parts are actually also pretty high-priced, so you can get a pretty good pri price for them. Uh, ways to look that up and research it out uh, would be on eBay, uh, Craigslist, just check out the completed listings on eBay, how frequently people are selling those parts, how frequently they're sold, and then just do a little Google search on you know how common the car is that you're looking at. And that brings me on to my second, uh, my second tip, and this is using eBay and Craigslist for selling parts and such. So, usually what I do is I use a combination of eBay and Craigslist uh, for selling parts. The smaller stuff, the smaller stuff like this blower motor right here, uh, I'll sell on eBay just because eBay generally brings a higher price for a lot of the parts than Craigslist. And the smaller stuff, it's really easy to ship. And basically what I'll do is I'll just find how much it's selling for in the completed listings and then I'll list it the same way as they did. You know, you just got to make sure it works and it's in good condition. It's in decent condition because it's used. But um, So I'll basically sell the smaller stuff on eBay usually and the bigger stuff on Craigslist for the most part. You're not usually going to get as much money for parts on Craigslist, but you know, a nice flow of people coming to your house or meeting people to go sell parts is nice to have while you're, while you're shipping stuff on eBay as well. Tip number three, worry about the parts that actually sell. So a lot of people when they're looking at cars to part out, um, a lot of people when they're bringing car, uh, looking at cars to part out, they're thinking, hey, I'm gonna take apart the engine, the transmission, you know, I'm going to sell this whole transmission for a couple hundred bucks and sell the trammy for a couple hundred bucks. Well, don't really work that way exactly. So basically how I do it is, and what I've learned, is the first the stuff you're going to get calls for, especially on Craigslist, it's always going to be for exterior stuff um, that hold the car, car together. Basically the fenders, the hood, uh, the doors even and stuff like that those are the first thing that oh oh and the bumpers especially the bumpers the rear the front bumper everything that's the first stuff I sold off this car that was my first I made a grand really quick just selling the hood the fenders and the bumpers real quick just within a week or two I sold that off so and why that is is because a bunch of people when they're calling you you know, they've probably got front end damage or, you know, they've hit a car, they've hit a deer, especially around here, you got deer everywhere, um, you know, and they don't want to buy it straight from, you know, they don't want to buy a new piece for a grand to two grand a piece for a fender or a bumper. What they want to do is they want to just get a used part. Well, if you're looking at something like a Mercedes or a BMW, not a lot of the junkyards have those around this area. So when I post this on Craigslist, a lot of people see that and come to me to buy the parts. So that's really nice. So, you know, your exterior parts, your fenders, your bumpers, you're going to want to make sure if you're looking to buy a car to part out, you're going to want to make sure that those are in decent enough condition. 
Doesn't matter about the paint or anything, almost always they're going to paint it anyways. But you want to make sure that physically they're in decent condition, not, not any dents or anything like that. So then that brings me to a couple other parts that I usually get called, uh, called for that are really worth pulling. And that's stuff with anything with the AC system. Uh, those pumps, those regulators that deal with the ACs, very frequently bought. The steering wheel, the steering airbag, really. Um, the shifter assemblies, very, I always sell that really quick. Everybody wants that a shifter assembly because they can be a grand to two grand for a new part. And I'll sell for like 100, 200 bucks and that's it. So a lot of, a lot of these interior trim pieces, you can see here that I've taken basically everything off. I took the doors off, the rear view mirrors. There's just a lot of different stuff that you can part out and sell off of a car. The only thing is you just want to make sure that it's worth your time to take, uh, take these parts out. So what I'll do, you know, check on eBay, see, if, see what parts are selling, what parts you want to actually take the time out to remove and post on eBay and Craigslist. Tip number four, you're parting out the car, not repairing it. Tear through whatever you need to tear through as long as it's not worth any money. You know, I've cut so many wires on this project. I've cut so much metal and rubber hoses. You know, if it's in your way, go ahead and just cut right through. You don't have to be gentle with it because you're just parting this car out. I had a guy come here and he wanted this and this part of the frame and he just sawed right through it and took it away with him. He's a welder and took that right away with him. So, you know, normally with a car when you're making repairs, you want to be as gentle as possible so you don't make any more, uh, you don't hurt the car anymore, have to repair anything else. Well, when you're parting out something, you don't care about what's broken, what's not, as long as it's not the part you're selling. So I just cut right through everything that's in your way, basically. Tip number five, safety, safety, safety. A few bucks isn't worth a hospital trip. So I've, I've seen people go under a car with only a, uh, only a jack under it. Don't ever do that when doing a parts car or any other car really. But you know what I do when I'm starting out, the, starting out parting a car is the first thing I do is I jack it up, take the tires off, and I put wood blocks around the whole thing, wood and concrete. And I double and I double and triple up on it because I've had friends that have been injured by cars that have fallen, uh, that have uh, collapsed. So I don't take any chances with it. I put wood blocks throughout it and concrete. So just make sure you do that when you're going under the car. Jack it up high enough so you got plenty of space under there because I'm sure you're going to be, if you're parting out a car and trying to pull the differential, the trammy, uh, and some other parts, you're going to be under there for a long time. So just make sure that you've got it well jacked up and plenty of blocks under it. The second thing about safety is, and I can never stress this enough, dealing with Freon. So not a lot, a lot of uh, a lot of people who work on cars, they usually don't. Me a lot of people won't mess with Freon because it's it can be very dangerous. Uh, that's because you know it's extremely cold and they can give you immediate frostbite if you get touched by it. Um, but just make sure either have a because um, these the issue is these AC parts they're worth quite a bit of money. The condenser, the compressor, the blower motor that I just showed you that I just pulled uh, they're worth a lot of money used. So you want those parts but you don't want to mess with the Freon really unless you have an evacuator. So if you have an evacuator, great. You know how to evacuate the Freon, get it out of the system so you can remove these parts. If not, there's a, I've seen a couple videos on people making their own makeshift evacuators. Uh, evacuators. If you want to do that. If not, I would suggest just calling a professional. A lot of them will do it for free because Freon's worth, uh, Freon's worth quite a bit of money. So a lot of people will evacuate the system for free just to get it out of there.